One is, what about the dimensions of these creatures? Six miles versus a measly two. Okay? Uh, what you guys don't know is, what did the Yucatan plunge into? You know that in our area, it got really exciting sediments. Sand, clay, <laughs> and if you react them, you know what they are? Sand, Sand and clay. And clay. <laughs> okay? There's nothing comes out of it. But if you go to the Yucatan, it plunged into units that had limestone. Oh, yeah. And hydrite, which is gypsum, it's a sulfate. You dislodge the sulfate and add water to it, and what do you got? Sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid, right? Okay. And so that's a very chemically reactive sequence. There are other chemically active uh, rock layers there. So the difference was scale and also geochemistry. Okay. <laughs> really disappointing. We thought we'd really get something. And, and they've done four or five studies and they can't find even one microfossil that disappeared. You've never seen kids cost so much. <laughs> okay, now I want to take you into recent history very briefly. Now we've dashed through this. What we go now we jump into a relatively recent, it's called the Yorktown Sea. This is the sea that you remember Rice's Pit? Yeah. That's in the upper Yorktown. A lot of fossils. We have a few fossils uh, which are from the York town. This is a baby one. <laughs> By the way, how many have ever lost, uh, lost your appetite? Oh, good. There are a few. All of you have. <laughs> Every one of you oh. have lost your appetite. You know why? Baby teeth. Your teeth are made, they are calcium hydroxychlorochlorophosphate. Okay? That's the mineral APA, T I T E, appetite. <laughs> so, what? You're leaking? Oh, no, no, you can't. Oh, my dear, you must stay. Anyway, uh, this is a, this is a, a shark. If you haven't seen it, look at that guy back there. He's got a magnificent one, like this. And this is a paltry one but at least nobody's going to steal this one, <laughs> like they did mine. <laughs> Here, okay, so there's sharks deep in these beds. Then, uh, two, there's things like this. Venus. It's a poem, right. I don't mean to be humorous, but which one? <laughs> the humorous. The humorous. The upper arm bone of a whale. We have tons and tons of whales. If you don't believe it, just look under my deck. There's probably a ton and a half of whale bones. <laughs> if you drive into parking areas, there's a great big uh, rib from the right whale. Okay? Now you get a look at this one first, okay? But this is a kind of life form we find. We also find a lot of shell life. Here being one of them. If I know what to tell you about this one. State fossil? It's a state fossil in Virginia. It's a Jefferson skull. Oh, it's beautiful. How many would like one? I love it. Anybody want one? Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, when we're through. <laughs> oh. 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 Awesome. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's another one back there. Okay. Yeah. I found one in my front yard. So. Oh, good. Where'd you get it? Hampton. In Ham? Yes. Where'd you dig it up? I'm sorry? Where'd you get it? I, I, on uh, near Kikatan High School. It was in the top two feet of the soil. How big? Uh, that's yeah. either planted there or it's Madisonius. Okay. How big? That's upper York Town. And, and it was as big as the, the one you shared, that one. Yeah, well, it was that large. Size is up. Look at the ribs and see if they're squarish. Okay. And see if they're more than usually uh, 11 or 12. All right. And uh, that's just a quickie guy. But this is a fossil named after Thomas Jefferson. Okay, it's called Chesapeake and Jefferson. When you get the specimen, please make sure you get the little piece of paper. Yeah, just, okay. <laughs> oh, I don't know. No, we just had it. Oh, okay. Is it going, is it going this way? This way? Okay. 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 Oops, there we go. Hey, how's my tech type doing back there? Yeah, how's the tech type doing? <laughs> 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 
get out of my pocket. There it is. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is the kind of still moving. You might find in, in the East Over, the Guard of the York down, and so forth. Now, how many have ever been up Interstate 64? Oh. oh, you guys are really culturally not deprived, not pretty deprived, but uh, you have oh, right. Okay, ready? Oh, that's now, lovely. Next oh, time you go up there, way? I want yes. you to be a little careful because yeah. you remember, you know where Big Bethel Road is? Yeah. yeah. Well, when you're going along there, all of a sudden you rise about 10 or 15 feet. Then you go to Harpersville Road and you rise again. And then when you go over and go to a dare neck and come out, you go boop, 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 boop. You get to west of Richmond, there's a big rise right there. 80 feet up there. That's a shoreline for the Yorktown Sea. Okay? Now, so these stair steps. Now, each one of these, think of that, is a place where the shoreline was sometime in the past. You got that? Yeah. So when you get out of your car, oh, let's say you're uh, on uh, 134 and you, you, you park at Big Bell Road, walk down. When you get to the very bottom where it breaks like this, you jump up and down and you say, well, son of a beach. <laughs> <laughs> because each one of these is a shoreline. Now, what makes a sea level go up and down, up and down, up and down like this? Well, most of these are related to recent glaciation in the last few million years. Okay, we've got that. So this is sea level change. It's relatively rapid. If you go back about 400,000 years, Oh, so what's this body of water in here called? Chesapeake Bay. No, it's called dry land. Oh, no. <laughs> Here's the Susquehanna River. Cutting across the eastern shore. There are three major deep valleys cutting across the eastern shore that have been completely covered up. Huh. This is one of them. Here's the James coming up and going out to the ocean. We come down to about 350,000 years. Thank you for returning. Uh, sea level's up now, uh, about 45 feet, 48 feet above sea level. Uh, how many have ever been to uh, oh, uh, Carter's Grove? You, you go out, you look toward the river, it drops off. Well, that's the shoreline right there. Okay, that's, That was where the water was, about 330,000 years, 50,000 years. Uh, down here, there's a barrier island. By the time this, this time is over, this barrier island has moved and slammed against Smithfield, what is now Smithfield. Uh, the eastern shore, short. But erosion here to the north and currents bringing the sediment southward, so it keeps doing this, keeps developing southward. Sea level drops. The Susquehanna now establishes itself south of that sand body. The James being typical Virginia, stays in its place. Uh, there's Hampton, in case anybody needs to know. Uh, 120,000 years ago is what we're going to look at, but the sea level went up and down three times in that interval there. This is the Proto Chesapeake Bay 120,000 years ago. Notice something wrong about it. There's no southern end. It goes all the way into North Carolina for over 100 miles. There's a barrier island here. And for those who know about Regent University that teaches that the Earth is 8,000 years old, uh, there's Pat Robertson's establishment right there. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to hear from my wife about that. <laughs> We go back 18,000 years ago, uh, huge uh, continental glaciers covered much of North America. And you can see Scandinavia, parts of uh, Eurasia, uh, of course, England uh, <coughs> was covered. And so you have a huge amount of ice. The amount of ice that, was, that took water out of the sea to Maine brought sea level down 400 feet, roughly. So, if you'd been smart, you would have bought Virginia Beach property then. <laughs> <laughs> See how the dollars made it available as beachfront property.